Welcome back to the Mock Miller YouTube channel, folks. My name's James, and in this video, we're gonna be making 40 pints of beer using all grain with the most basic set of equipment we can possibly find. So the goal for this video is to show that you don't need to outlay thousands of pounds on equipment to get into the awesome hobby of making beer at home from grain. The skills and experience you gain by jumping into all grain brewing is absolutely second to none. It will serve you all the way through the hobby. So let's take a look at the equipment we're gonna be using today to make our beer. Now let's kick things off by talking about the method we're gonna be using to make our beer today. Now there's loads of different ways to make all grain beer, but by far and large, the most approachable way is the brew in the bag method, where we're gonna have a mesh bag immersed in hot water, and that's what we're gonna add our grain into to convert our starches that are in the grain into sugars that our yeast is gonna ferment later down the line. To further simplify our brew day, we're gonna be going down the route of full volume mashing. And what that means is that all of the water, or as brewers call it, liquor, that we need for our beer is gonna be in our mash tun uh, already. So you may have seen that some people uh, talk about the term sparging, which is where after you've done the initial mash, you rinse the grain with hot water, but that would involve having to have a second one of these, which is our vessel that we're gonna be using to heat uh, our water, to do our mash, and then to boil in. So actually, we're going down the full volume route, which we know works, we've tested it. It means we can keep things nice and simple with one vessel to do all of the heating for us. Let's take a look at the vessel we've got here. So this is one of our most basic units that allows you to both heat water for mashing and then afterwards boil that wort that we've created to sanitize it and layer in our hops. So inside our vessel, we have a 2.4 kilowatt heating element, which is gonna provide what we need uh, in terms of power for both boiling and heating up the water for mashing. Also, we've got a stainless steel tap on the front here, which is gonna allow us to safely and effectively drain our finished work after we've done the boil. Here we have our tailored mesh grain bag for brewing in the bag. Now this is compatible with loads of different pieces of equipment that we sell, um, such as stainless steel kettles, but it fits perfectly into one of these plastic uh, HLTs, mash tuns and boilers. Now you might be wondering how are we gonna chill our work after we've done the boil? Well, again, we are going with the most basic option possible, and this is a no chill cube. These are awesome if you're thinking about how you can reduce your uh, water usage throughout your brew day because most chillers use some form of water to either counterflow the hot liquid round and remove the heat or to immerse a chiller coil into the vessel and then run cold water through that. The no chill cube gets around that so it further it reduces your water consumption on brew day but also it's dead easy to use. All we need to do is put our hot wort after the boil into here, close the lid, leave it overnight until it's finished um, chilling down to a temperature that our yeast is gonna be happy with, and then we pour it from here into our fermenter bucket. Now, when it comes to fermentation, again, we're keeping it super simple. We're using one of our plastic fermenter buckets, and all we're gonna be doing is putting the wort straight into there after it's chilled overnight, We'll then add our yeast, put our airlock on to keep things nice and sanitary in here, stop any bugs and nasties getting in. And then on the front of here, it comes with a tap that has the ability to turn and receive a bottling stick. Let's talk a little bit about some of the other smaller items of equipment we're gonna be using today and some of the consumable things that you're gonna need as you get into the hobby of brewing beer. So first things first, let's talk about the consumable side of things. Now we have cleaning powder, which we're gonna need to clean all of our equipment, both before and after we've brewed beer. We have concentrated no rinse sanitizer, which we're gonna need to mix up to make sure that once we've done our cleaning, we can ensure that all of our equipment that's gonna to touch our finished wort is sanitary. And then over here, we've got two things we're gonna be adding to our beer throughout 
the process. Now the first here is something called sodium metabisulfate. Now I won't go into all the technicalities of it, but what that does, you add a very small amount of it to your water at the beginning of brew day to remove chlorine. You'll end up with far better beer by doing this and it's a really simple step, cost effective. The other item here is protoflock tablets. Now they're a type of fining and we add those to our wort just towards the end of the boil and what it does is it collects up all the proteins that are left in the boil at the end, makes them clump together and drop to the bottom. And again, this helps us create clearer beer at the end of the process. Two really important but cost-effective consumable items that we can add to end up with far better beer at the end of the day. Now over here on the other side of the table, we've got a couple of items that are gonna help us with our brew day as well. First of all, we have a hydrometer. Now we've got a great video on how to use and read a hydrometer, which I'll pop up on the screen now. But also what a hydrometer does is it measures the amount of sugar we've got in solution, both once we've finished boiling and we're ready to start fermenting our beer, but also throughout fermentation. And it also tells us when fermentation has finished. So check out the video that I put up on the screen if you wanna learn more about how to use a hydrometer. We've got a plastic spoon. Now we're gonna need that because we're gonna to need to get in there and give everything a good stir once our grain is in the hot water. Right, we've got a really simple thermometer here. This is gonna allow us to see the temperature of our water before we add the grain, because that's really important. And it's gonna allow us to see kind of when we're getting close to the boil, uh, when we're at that point of the brew. We've got a bottling stick, which helps us when it comes to bottling our finished beer. And we've got a spray bottle because we're gonna need to put some of our no rinse sanitizer into here once it's been diluted down. That's really gonna be helpful for us throughout the process. There's a couple of items that aren't on the table, which I just need to touch on. First of all is bottles. Now, actually what I've done when I've looked at all of this equipment and pulled it together is I've chosen one of our starter kits that comes with 48 plastic screw top bottles. They're dead easy to use. And also there's links to everything we're gonna be using today in the description below. The other thing we're gonna need is some sugar to add to our bottles when it comes to packaging the beer and leaving it to secondary ferment and carbonate in the bottle. We've got stacked loads of other content on all those parts of the brewing process. So make sure you've subscribed to our channel, hit the bell for notifications, because that way you're gonna stay up to date with everything we're doing here at Maltmiller HQ. Now's probably the time when we're gonna get onto the exciting stuff and start talking about the recipe we're gonna be brewing today. Now, this is one of our new true to style recipe kits that are all about creating great beer, showcasing fantastic ingredients, and coming in at a price point that's really accessible. All of the recipe kits in this range are under 25 pounds and will brew 23 liters of beer. Now that comes in at 40 pints. Now this recipe kit we're brewing today is number one in our true to style range. And it's a golden ale featuring one of our favorite hops grown in the UK called Mystic. Now Mystic brings things like black currant, but also passion fruit and subtle tropical notes as well making it a wonderful choice for this really quaffable summer ale. Now we've got a total of four and a half kilos of grain here. And what we're aiming for at the end is a beer that's gonna have a starting gravity of around 1044. Now the yeast we're using is Nottingham from Loudbury. So that's gonna attenuate quite well. And it's gonna mean that we'll finish the beer probably at an ending gravity of around 1010. We're then aiming to have a beer that will be around 4.4% ABV. Now, as ever, when we're brewing from grain, those statistics that we're aiming for are always targets, not an absolute. Everybody's brewing equipment is slightly different. Their methods are slightly different. It's always a learning process that we look back on and think, actually, what could I do differently to either get to the result that I would like or make an improvement to something so that I can end up with a beer that I'm even prouder of at the end. And because we're going with the brew in the bag method for this, we've selected on our website to have this recipe kit crushed fine. Now that really helps with our mash efficiency and getting as much sugar from the starches that are present in the grain. Now we need to get some water into our heating vessel. So let's crack on with that. Now that's all of our water added into our vessel and I've heated it up. I've also put our grain bag in and just before I started heating it up, I added a little bit of the sodium metabisulfite. One thing I do need to talk about is temperature at this point. Now our recipe that we're brewing today calls for a mash temperature of 65 degrees, and we're gonna hold that mash temperature for an hour. But the water that I've got in here, and I've checked it with my thermometer, is actually at a higher temperature than that. It's at 70 degrees. 
And the reason for that is that when I add the grain into here, it's going to bring the temperature down because this grain isn't at 70 degrees. So the process of adding the grain is going to draw the temperature of the overall liquid in here to our target 65 degrees. Now, if it's a little bit under that, that's perfectly fine because what I can do is plug the element back in, give it a good stir just for a minute or two while it's heating up, and then I'll be able to turn the element off again when we're at the right temperature. Now we're going to move on to the fun bit, which is doing our grain into the liquid. And for me, this is always the most enjoyable part of the brewing process. I love the smell of when you add that crushed malted barley into the liquid that we've got here. It's just phenomenal. So let's crack on. So we're just going to cut the corner off the bag and we're going to start to pour the grain into our bucket nice and gently because what we want to try and avoid at this point is lots and lots of clumping up of our grain into what we call dough balls. So I'm going to do it in a couple of stages. In goes my sort of first portion. I tend to try and do this in two or three stages depending on how much grain I'm adding in. Give that a good stir. Make sure that I haven't got any clumps in there. And then I move on to my next lot. Let's give that one a good stir. Get right in because those dough balls tend to have a habit of sinking right to the bottom. And now onto our final lot of grain going in. Okay, so that's all of our grain in. Now we're going to go in for our final stir and get all of this lovely grain mixed in. And as I said, the smell is just fantastic. And there we go. I'm happy with that now. I can see there's no dough balls sat in there and all the grains thoroughly mixed in. Now, the next thing I need to do is just take a temperature check, see whether I've hit the temperature that I was aiming for. I'm happy with that. I'm a little bit over it, just around 66 degrees. I'm not going to worry too much about that because I know that the temperature in here is going to drop a few degrees over the course of the hour mash that's going to take place. So now all we need to do is pop the lid just loosely on just to try and keep a little bit more of that heat in. I'm going to set a 60 minute timer on my phone, but I'm also going to come and check back on this a couple of times throughout the mash. And if needs be, give it a bit of a stir, check the temperature again. And if I need to, if it's dropped too far, like I said, put the, the heating element back on. That's our 60 minute mash done. Now I've checked the temperature on this a couple of times throughout the period that I've been mashing for, and I have lost a couple of degrees throughout that period of time. But like I said, I'm not gonna worry about this too much because something I might consider for my next brew is actually to uh, put some form of insulation round the vessel whilst I'm mashing. That could be anything from a blanket or a sleeping bag to a cardboard box really just something that helps keep that heat in there. Now's the next part of the journey. We're going to look at pulling our bag out of our vessel. So to do that, first of all, we need to remove our thermometer and take the lid off and look at that wonderful, wonderful work that we're creating in there. But we now need to lift the grain bag out, let it drain for a while, and then pop this into another vessel just to finish draining through, give it a bit of a squeeze. Now, there's loads of different ways you could do this. If you've got a bucket at home that would fit this in, you could use that. I'm actually going to be using our other bucket that we're going to be using to ferment in because I can always clean this once we're done. So let's pull the grain bag out. Now, we need to be a bit gentle here because we want to make sure we don't get any of the uh, grain that's within the bag out side of it and into our work. So we're going to gather this up and we're just going to lift it gently up and let it start to drain into the bucket. Now as it starts to drain through it'll be a little bit easier to lift as the liquid pours through and you can see there's quite a lot of liquid still coming from that. So I'm just going to hold on to it for a little bit longer before I move it over into the other bucket. One thing that some people like to do when they're brewing in the bag with this method is at this point, hang the grain bag over the bucket and let it drain in. It's a great option if you've got the ability to do it. Okay, so that's most of the liquid drained out. 
I'm just going to move that over into this bucket. We're going to leave that there just to finish draining through and we're going to give it a little bit of a squeeze to get all of the goodness out of the grain. One thing we can do whilst the grain is draining into this bucket is actually start heating what we've got in here. And that's as simple as plugging in our element and turning the power on. Now that the power is on, this is going to take a little bit of time to come up to a boil. What we really need to do at this point though is stick around. You can't just walk away from this. And the reason for that is that as we come up to a boil, there's going to be a cap of frothy, foamy proteins start to come together on the surface. That creates a cap over the top. And a bit like when milk boils, if, not care if you're not careful, it could rush up the side and actually boil over. And it's an absolute nightmare to try and clean up. One thing we can do to try and avoid that is make sure we've got our spray bottle with sanitizer close to hand because as it comes up, if it does look like it's getting a bit high, you can spray the top of the foam. It just takes some of the kind of danger out of it and knocks it back down. Now we're venturing ever closer to a boil. We're at about 94 degrees. And at this point, it's really important that we weigh out our first edition of hops because they need to go in as we get to 100 degrees. So I've got my scales here and I've got my bag of Mystic Hops. So I'm just gonna open them up. Take a look inside. Always give them a sniff. They smell fantastic. And I need to weigh out 30 grams, which is what this recipe calls for. Now with all the true to style recipes and any recipe kit you buy from us, you will get a full instruction sheet included in your package. Right, let's weigh out these hops. Like I said, we want 30 grams. And the hops that go into the boil at the very beginning are the ones that give us our bitterness in our finished beer. Seal that back up. We're going to have further hop additions to add throughout the boil, but we'll come on to those later. This first edition of hops I'm going to put into the boil before we get to 100 degrees. What it does is it actually helps break up some of that surface tension that we've talked about previously. As you can see, we've got that lovely foam cap over the top of the beer at the moment and it's just starting to bubble up through. What will happen is when it gets to a full rolling 100 degree boil, it will start to turn over. That's when we're at our highest risk of this going up the side of the kettle and boiling over. Putting hops in actually really helps prevent that because it breaks the surface tension and just gives us what we need. So I'm gonna put those in now. Now that they're in, I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a stir with our plastic spoon. Get those really well dispersed. And actually you can see the cap on the top of the wort start to turn a little bit green and the smell fundamentally changes when these go in. I'm starting to get some of that nice, spicy floral hop aroma coming out. So as you can see, we've hit a really strong rolling boil now, which is perfect for what we wanna do. Also, you'll notice how the protein cap has now dispersed. It's been drawn back into the boiling work and the whole risk of a boil over has gone now. Adding those hops in just before you get to 100 degrees really, really helps. Now this recipe calls for an hour's boil. However, 15 minutes before the end of the boil, I've got to add more hops and some of the protoflock, which I talked about previously, which will help give us a clear finished beer at the end. So what I'm actually gonna do is set a 45 minute timer and then I'll come back and put those additions in. Okay, the time has just gone, which means it's time to add our next lot of hops. And we're going in again with another 30 grams of Mystic. But also at this point, we're gonna be adding our Protoflock tablet. So I'm gonna put the hops in first. And actually we don't need a whole Protoflock tablet. I usually put in about half. It's not an exact science, but you definitely don't need a whole one. That goes in. Now we set another timer for 10 minutes because there is a five minute addition of hops that needs to go in just before the end of the boil. Another time has gone off, time to put in our next hop addition. We've got 20 grams of Mystic this time, just for the last five minutes of the boil. And you may be wondering why we're adding hops throughout the boil. It's all about building up layers of complexity within the flavor. And if you're using a single hop in a beer, it's a great way to experience how that hop performs throughout the entire brewing process. Now we need to set a five minute timer for this. 
and then come back at the very end and I'll talk you through the next steps. Now we've come to the end of our boil and it's really simple. All we need to do now is switch off our element. And the next step is we do have one last hop addition to add, but for this recipe, the, the actual work needs to chill down a little bit before we do that. Ideally, it wants to be around about 80 degrees. We've got another 20 grams of mystic to go in. For this, we're just gonna use thyme as our friend. I'm gonna put the lid over the kettle just to stop anything, anything kind of falling in from above and leave it. Now it's gonna take a little bit of time to come back down to 80 degrees or thereabouts. So I'm gonna check it periodically with our thermometer. Once it has, we're then gonna put our last 20 grams of Mystic hops in and leave it for 15 minutes before we drain this into our no chill cube. We're moving on to the next step now. It's taken about 15 minutes or so to get down to a temperature that I'm happy with. We're looking at about 81, 82 degrees in here. And what we're gonna do is add our last addition of hops, which is our final 20 gram addition of Mystic. That's going in. And what we're actually gonna do at this point is what we call a whirlpool. So it's dead easy to do. I'm gonna take my spoon, put it in, and I'm gonna give this a really good stir. But what I don't wanna do is have too much in the way of splashing, because I don't wanna get oxygen into this at this point, because it's still hot. So we're gonna give it a good stir, just to get a bit of a vortex going in there. And as you can see now, that's really nice spinning round and what will happen is that all of the hops and the debris that we've got in there, as this settles, will form kind of like a cone in the middle of the, of the kettle at the bottom. That's going to mean that when we take the finished wort out into our no-chill cube, we'll leave a lot of that behind. I'm just going to put the lid back on loosely, just like I said earlier, to stop stuff falling in. We've come in for a slightly closer look at this next bit because we've got our wort in here that's still quite hot. It's still at about 70 odd degrees and we're gonna transfer it into our no-chill cube. Now to do that, there's a couple of things we need. First of all, a length of silicon tubing that's been cleaned and sanitized and our spray gun. We just wanna give the nozzle that we're gonna be attaching the hose to a squirt just to make sure that we've sanitized it with our no rinse sanitizer. Now, next up, we're going to undo the lid on our no chill cube, which has also been cleaned and sanitized. And we're going to put the hose onto the hose barb. We're going to feed the tube in and we want to get it as close to the bottom of the cube as we can because what we don't want to do is introduce lots of oxygen at this point. Now we can slowly turn on the tap and start to let our work flow into our no chill cube. Something I just want to show you right now is how clear the liquid is that's coming out from the kettle through the hose. So that's nearly everything come through. I can see that it's just starting to sputter a little bit. So I'm going to shut the tap off. I'm going to remove the hose, shake off the excess. And now I can put the lid on to the no chill cube, screw it up reasonably tight. All we need to do now is let this chill down to a temperature that we know our yeast is going to be happy at. That's going to take around about 12, 15 hours. It really depends on the temperature at the moment where you are. We're in our warehouse here. It should come down overnight. And then tomorrow morning, we can put this into our fermenter bucket and add our yeast. By the magic of video editing, it is now 24 hours since we made our work. It's been sat in our no-chill cube overnight. It's come down to a temperature that we're happy now for our yeast to be added to. So what we need to do is pour the liquid that's inside our no-chill cube into our fermenter. We're going to get loads of air into it as we pour lots of sloshing around. Then we're going to add our yeast. Our fermenter bucket has been cleaned and sanitized using the products that we talked about at the beginning of the video. So I know that it's absolutely fine now for us to pour our wort into. So this part's dead easy. All we have to do is remove the lid, check that the tap is closed, take the lid off of our no chill cube, pick this up and it is going to be a bit of a heavy boy and pour 
into our fermenter. And we want loads of sloshing around at this point. And the reason for that is that the air that we're gonna be incorporating into the wort right now helps our yeast do its job. Right, so let's make sure all of that's in there. Now we're gonna to need to make sure that we give this a good clean and sanitize it ready for its next use. Taking our packet of Nottingham yeast, gonna give it a quick spray with some no rinse sanitizer. Take some scissors, cut the lid off, and then this is really simple. All we have to do, sprinkle our yeast over the top and over the course of the next 24 hours, that yeast will start to do its job. Lid goes back onto the fermenter. Add a little bit of sanitizer fluid into the airlock on the fermenter, and we're done. All that remains now is to leave this in a area that's going to be at sort of ambient temperature, say 20 degrees, between 18 and 22 degrees, um, and ideally as constant for that temperature as possible. You know, you might want to think about a room in your house that stays kind of a, a fairly stable temperature, or as you progress with the hobby, you may want to think about incorporating some form of fermentation temperature control, because this makes a massive difference to the finished product at the end, because yeast doesn't like variations in temperature it stresses it out and that can cause slight off flavors in your finished beer however as we said this is all about keeping it as simple as possible so just in an area that's got a fairly stable temperature if you wanted to you could wrap a blanket around it something like that and this will take anywhere between seven to ten days to finish fermentation and we use our hydrometer to check that again check out that video that i mentioned earlier about how to read and use a hydrometer there we have it that's our brew day completely done. Our wort is in the fermenter. In around about two or three weeks time, we're gonna be able to start enjoying that fantastic beer that we've made. If you wanna learn about packaging, then check out some of the other videos that we've got. I'll put some links on the screen now. All that remains for me to say is thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the bell for notifications so you can keep up with everything we're doing here at Malt Miller HQ. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and have a great brew.